Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Uh, in this lesson today, we're going to start a look at oral training. Now, for those of you who don't know, oral training is about developing your ear to listen better. And the type of oral training we're going to start off with is called interval ear training. Now, there are lots of different types of ear training. The ones that we're going to start off with is learning to recognize the distance between two notes. Now, I'm not going to go into the theory of this. If you want to get really into the, th the really understand how the intervals are created and how we name them and all that sort of jazz, then you want to check out my ebook called Practical Music Theory. What I'm going to be doing in this series is actually doing practical examples, getting you listening, teaching you what to listen for, how to apply song references, and then we're actually going to be doing some tests at the end of each one of the lessons. Now, the type of interval training that we're doing, as I mentioned, is interval ear training. And we're specifically going to be looking at the melodic type. Now, in melodic interval ear training, bit of a mouthful, uh, we're looking at one note that comes after another note. So this kind of interval. As opposed to the harmonic type, where you get two notes at the same time. Very easy to remember. The melodic ones create melodies one note after the other, and the harmonic ones are used to create harmonies or chords. So we're going to be looking, first of all, at ascending melodic interval training. So one note going up to another note. And we're going to be looking at the names of them and really listening to what they sound like very closely. Now, the way that it's best to start doing this is by referencing a song that uses those same two notes at the beginning. And the first one we're going to have a look at is the interval of a fourth. Now, the interval of a fourth sounds like this. That's the interval of a fourth. It's actually the fourth note of a scale. Well, fourth note of the major scale specifically. One, two, three, four. And that interval is the start of quite a few songs, actually. But the ones that we're going to look at um, is Old Anxine, which I'm sure many of you know. Fourth. It's also the wedding march at the beginning. So I really want you to try and get that into your head. Now, there's lots of different ways of practicing this. We're going to be mainly testing it. If you want to go and check out the website, there's a really couple of really good singing exercises. Even if you don't sing and you don't really like singing, singing is a really good way of developing your ear as well. So there's some singing exercises there that you might want to check out as well. But for now, we're just listening to that fourth. And we're now going to compare it to another interval which is the interval of a fifth, which is that sounds like this. This is the beginning of the Superman theme. You should practice singing along with it if you can. It will really help your ears out if you practice singing along. Even if you feel a little bit silly, don't worry, everybody does when you're singing intervals. OK, now. That's a fifth, Superman. And here's a fourth, which was old anxiety, let's say. OK. Now I'm just going to dip my neck down a little bit so you can't see which interval it is that I'm playing now. And I want you to see if you can tell. Can you, can you hear whether it's a fourth or a fifth? Here's the first one. So listen to it again. Does it sound like the start of Old Anxiety or the start of Superman? Hopefully you were thinking it was Old Anxiety there. Okay, how about this one? I'll play another one now. I'm going to start with a different root note now, so the bass note's going to be a little different. Here, does this one sound like to you Old Anxiety or does it sound like Superman? Have a listen again, nice and close. Okay, hopefully you were thinking it was Superman. Okay, and I'm going to give you one more. So here we go. See if you can tell me what this interval is. Is this one a fourth, which is old anxiety, or a fifth, which is Superman? Listen again, listen real close. Okay, 
made. That one was a fourth. Now hopefully you're getting the idea of this. So by learning what different songs have what intervals at the beginning of them, we can start to recognize all of the different intervals that are available in music. There's only 12, so it's not that big a task. What's really important when you're learning this though is to learn it in groups. If you try and learn too many at once, it's really confusing for the ear. So what we're going to do is I've broken it down into five stages. There's actually ten on the website, but five for what we're going to be looking at now. We're starting off with the fourths and fifths, and that's it. Just listening to fourths and fifths. There's one more I include in this one as well, which is a unison, which is two notes that are the same. Now, we don't need to practice doing that. If it's the same note, it's the same note, right? So really, we're just looking at fourths and fifths, but to be correct with everything, I guess in this level, I, we're including a unison as well. Now. In a second we're going to do a test, but what I also want to explain in this lesson is how you can do a test with your mate or whatever, and or, or make a test yourself if you don't have anyone that you can work with. So um, I'm going to give you a test, you can do that maybe once or twice before you'll know all of the answers. So really there's a couple of good ways. One is to use a, a recorder. There's loads of different free kind of PC based recording systems. So what I'd recommend that you, you do is you write down like a whole bunch of fours and fives in, in a particular order. Maybe put a line every ten of them so you know, or maybe just do ten to start off with. Um, and then record yourself playing this list and then leave it for a week and come back and listen to it and see if you can work out what they are, write it down and then check with your answers. So it's, it's quite easy to do it yourself. This is what the, the way I did it. I had an old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and I used to test myself with the, the different interval things. Um, and or you can get your mate to do it, which is also a really good way to do it. So um, I'm going to show you in a second how to play a fourth and how to play a fifth. And then you can just play one and your mate has to guess which one it is. And then he guesses and you tell him if it was right or not. And then he'll play one and you have to guess. It's a re that's a, probably the best way to do it because you can just do it. There's no way of cheating. You don't have to remember them all the time. So having some kind of jam buddy that you can work on this stuff with is really good. If you can't do that, then you can uh, record your own intervals and or, <laughs> funnily enough, I've got an ear trainer on my website. So you can go to the website to justinguitar.com click on oral training and there's a link there that'll take you to the Justin Guitar Interval Ear Trainer, uh, which not only uh, tests you on the different intervals, but it gives you some challenges over the different levels. Once you get 90% on a particular level, you can move up to the next level and you can go through and you can get yourself on the leaderboard. It's a little competition thing. Lots of good fun, that one. So you might want to check that out. Uh, before we do the test, we're nearly, the lesson's nearly over, but before we actually do the proper test, um, I want to show you what the intervals look like on the guitar. So if you wanted to have a go at it with your buddy, then you, know, then you can. Um, now for all of these different intervals, I'm just going to be showing you with a sixth string root and with a fifth string root. Now the reason for that is because maybe some of you noticed already that the guitar is a little bit funny with the tuning. You kind of the, the second string seems to be a little bit different to all of the others, and that kind of muddles up the interval shapes. Now it's not particularly difficult, but for now we're just going to be looking at the all of the intervals with a sixth string root and a fifth string root because then they stay the same all the time. So let's get to a close up and I'll show you how to play a fourth and how to play a fifth. Okay, here we are. I'm Picking this note here, C, as being the root note, but it really doesn't matter because what I'm teaching you is a shape. So it doesn't really matter what fret you put it on. It'll still always be a fourth if you start with a root note and you move over a string. There's your fourth. Now a fifth is on the next string and up two frets. And you can move them around, so like the fourth, which was in the same fret each time, we could move it to here. It's still just over a fret. We can move it up to here. Same with the fifth. Notice that looks like a bit like a power chord, doesn't it? Funny that power chords are sometimes called fifth chords, isn't it? I wonder why that would be. Anyway, so it works there from the root note to the fifth. It works there too. Do it anywhere you like. And what you should be doing if you're testing someone is moving it around. So you might do a fourth here, you might do a fifth up here, you might do a fifth down there, and you might do a fourth. And you're just moving it around, giving the other person a chance to listen to what the interval is. 
Okay, now it's time for you to do your first oral training test. There's going to be 10 questions, so maybe grab a blank piece of paper and write 1 to 10 on it in a little column. And I'm going to play each interval three times, and I want you to write down whether it's a fourth or a fifth. You don't have to care about what the first note is, what the root note is, whether I start on a C or an F sharp or a B flat, whatever, doesn't matter. All you're listening for is, is it a fourth or is it a fifth? And the answers are on the website. Go to the oral training area of the site to find the answers. Here is question one. And here's question two. And here's question three. And question four. Here's question five. And here's question six. Here's question seven. Here's question eight. Question nine. And here's question ten. Well, that's the end of oral training stage one. I uh, hope you did well and uh, you enjoyed it. It's, it gets kind of more and more fun the better you get at it, and it does take practice. Don't be too disheartened if you don't get it straight away. A lot of people really struggle with oral training. Uh, uh, just to put it in perspective, a lot of the, nearly all of the big music schools and universities or music unis uh, would have an oral training course. Uh, many of the kind of diploma level ones are doing the kind of thing that we're going to be doing over these five different stages of oral training lessons. Uh, they would do that over a year and expect students to be able to do it. So if you don't get it right away, don't be too discouraged. Um, but it is something I don't think it should take that long. If you do it the right way and you learn it a bit at a time, uh, you shouldn't have too many problems with it. So uh, you might want to go and check out there's some more information on how and why and some other kind of links to other beneficial parts of, of doing oral training on the website so go and check out that oral training section uh, it's linked on the front page in the left hand column of course uh, take care of yourselves i hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you for another lesson sometime real soon bye bye